All right, here's a bonus video. It's a bonus video because it's material that I, I'm not going to hold you responsible for knowing, but I think that it's cool, so I'm going to show it to you anyway. Um, so we, we just said um, that our unit normal vector is perpendicular to our unit tangent vector, right? And I want to know, why is that the case? Well, our unit normal vector is just the unitized version of t prime. So really what I'm asking is, why is t perpendicular to t prime? This might not seem intuitive out the start, but, but when you think about it, there's no reason why a derivative would ne necessarily have to be perpendicular. And it has to do with some of the properties of unitizing that we'll talk about in a second. Because, um, you know, if I have some path here, r, let's say that this is my vector r of t, the tangent vector is not necessarily perpendicular, like this is r prime of t. They aren't necessarily perpendicular to one another, right? But they can meet at all angles depending upon the arc of the path. But our unit normal vector is perpendicular to our unit tangent vector. So let's do a little bit of recall. First, just for the sake of craziness, I'm going to start by taking the dot product of t with itself. Um, and this is out of the blue. I wouldn't think of this cleverly other than the fact that it proves the result that we want to find. So by definition, what is a dot product? A dot product we can rewrite as the magnitude of the first vector times the magnitude of the second vector times the cosine of the angle between them. This is something that should be review. Um, it's a review of dot product that they should have seen in 261. So we ha we're dealing with a very special vector in this case, though. So what is the magnitude of t? t was a unit tangent vector, so we know that its magnitude is 1. So the magnitude of t is just 1 times 1 times What's the cosine of the angle between them? Well, the cosine of that angle is going to be, it's flat. The angle is 0. So the cosine of the angle times the cosine of 0, and the cosine of 0 is, in fact, equal to 1. So we know that this dot product is equal to 1. Now let's look at, again, sort of a crazy thing. Let's take the derivative of both sides. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to t of t dot t and the derivative of 1 with respect to t. Well, this side is easy. This is the number 1. What's the derivative of 1? It's just 0. What's the derivative of a dot product? It's actually, like multiplication, we have to use product rule. It's going to be first times the derivative of the second, and in this case it's dotted with the derivative of the second because our operation is dot product, not multiplication, plus second dotted with the derivative of the first. So we end up with the left-hand side being 2 times the dot product t dotted with t prime is going to be equal to the derivative of 1, which is 0. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. And that means that t dotted with t prime is equal to 0. Now, why is this informative? Let's go back to our, our definition of dot product. We just found out that t dotted with t prime, that's exactly equal to the magnitude of our unit tangent vector times the magnitude of the derivative of the u tangent vector times the cosine of the angle between them is equal to 0. We know that this is 1. We might not know what the length of the derivative of the unit tangent vector is, but we don't need to know that. We, we just assume that it's not equal to 0. If this whole chunk is not 0, then it must mean that the cosine of theta was in fact equal to 0. When is the cosine of theta equal to 0? Well, that's true. Theta must be equal to pi over 2. 
in order for the cosine of theta to be equal to zero or plus any rotation of that. Meaning, thus, t and t prime are perpendicular. So that's just a little acute mathematical proof for why t and t prime are perpendicular. And we know that because n is equal to t prime divided by the magnitude of t prime, dividing by the magnitude is just going to shorten that vector. And that tells us that n and t are perpendicular.